first quarter 2015 CCHI Rater Refresh Training. This is our first of four sessions that we'll be conducting for the January-February testing window here in uh, early 2015. My name is Rich Overhold. I'm the Implementation Services Manager with McCann, uh, who is the technical partner of CCHI on the administration and the scoring associated with both the course CHI and the CHI exams. We're going to go ahead and mute some microphones, um, picking up a little background noise. If anybody does have any questions, uh, we'd certainly ask that you hold those for the end, uh, where we're going to be providing a, a question and answer session. Um, but if something urgent does pipe up as we go through the session, uh, I encourage you to use the GoToMeeting chat feature. Natalia and I will keep an eye on that, and we'll do our best to kind of stop and address it uh, as quickly as we can as we go through the session. Now our session, as usual, is going to run something approximately close to 30 minutes. Um, we're going to just uh, continue through our overview here uh, that I'll continue to lead. The bulk of the meeting, the actual radar refresh, should run something approximately 20 minutes or so, and we'll allow for a little question and answer time at the end, uh, which will be co-led by both Natalia and myself. Okay, an overview. All of the interpretation and site translation problems on the CHI exam are scored. We use anchored rating scales with specific quality of response associated with each score point that can be assigned by a rater. Criterion ratings are randomly inserted during the rating process. And this is done to provide a standard measure of quality control of the rating process and the performance of each rater. All of the problems or vignette responses are scored by two raters. If the two raters that respond uh, or, or that rate uh, one individual response differ by more than one point, then the item immediately is funneled to a third rater called a chief who will make the final uh, score determination for that item. Item validity. Let's discuss the validity of the items and the test. A job analysis study was conducted led by CCHI, this probably would have been about 2010 or so, uh, which identified the critical knowledge, skills, and activities required for successful medical interpreters. The um, result and output um, was the development of a test blueprint. And uh, what a blueprint does is it details the skills that are critical for successful performance, how each of those skills should be measured, and with how many specific test items. Each test item is explicitly linked to a KSA, which means a knowledge, skill, or activity described in a job analysis resultant report. Uh, the test content developers completed the initial linkage, and CCHI led subject matter experts uh, to verify the content developers' linkages. Performance of each of the items is continuously monitored by CCHI with technical assistance from the camp. Target audience. Now the purpose of the CHI examination is to distinguish minimum proficiency as a healthcare interpreter from lower levels given the target audience, and not to identify masterful interpreters. In this case, a target audience is a person who is able to perform the functions of an entry level healthcare interpreter competently and independently in a healthcare setting with the knowledge, skill, and ability required to relay messages accurately from a source language to a target language in a culturally competent manner and in accordance with established ethical standards. It is critical to successful and accurate rating and scoring that item raters keep that in mind. Also, please keep in mind, too, that the entry level in this definition refers to the level required to begin to be, uh, to be able to begin to perform unsupervised healthcare interpreting competently. Anchored rating scales. The CHI assessment utilizes anchored rating scales. This is a hallmark of anchored scales, is that each score point has associated with it a specific definition. The task for you as raters, then, is to evaluate the item that you're rating in the context of the anchored rating scales. 
and then you assign a rating based upon your common interpretation of the definition provided on the scale itself for each level of performance. Anchor rating scales have very clear advantages. They are uh, very easy and intuitive to use and understand. They do provide very specific feedback to candidates based on performance and where they fall on that scale. And they do minimize the risk of greater subjectivity. Performance scoring. Now, the, uh, the sort of scoring being conducted for the CHI examination is referred to as performance scoring, which allows the testing of candidates on complex content requiring a detailed response. In the case of CHI, the items require examinees to generate a response, which is then scored by all of you as the raters. Now, there are known issues with performance scoring. Um, such content can be very difficult to score. The scoring process itself inherently has a greater risk of subjectivity, uh, and hence the, the need for uh, periodic rate or refresh training, such as this one that we do every quarter. Um, it is far more costly, which is primarily due to the cost of uh, scoring and maintaining the rater population and the training. And it also requires human raters who require both ongoing training as well as ongoing monitoring. Risks to quality rating. Now, there are known risks to high quality rating, and CCHI takes every effort to mitigate this risk. Good rating requires sound inner rater reliability. That is, raters must agree with their ratings of the same test taker's response to an item. To the extent that raters agree, we have good inner rater reliability. And the use of anchored rating scales in the rater refresh meetings each cycle are meant to maintain this good inter-rater agreement. Uh, in addition, the CAN regularly tracks and reports on rater performance each cycle. And this is to help ensure that raters, uh, uh, rater performance uh, is consistent from uh, window to window. There are no threats to quality rating, and raters should always keep these issues in mind as they conduct scoring. Uh, one of these is the halo effect. Uh, this is a situation in which positive or negative performance on one part of the test can influence subsequent ratings further down in the test. For example, um, the test taker does very well on one problem, and the rater would then subsequently rate and view that test taker positively on other problems. Um, central tendency is the failure to differentiate across candidates which essentially means uh, raters would assign near equal ratings to all problems regardless of actual test taker performance. Contrast is a situation where test taker performance is judged not against an anchored scale, but rather against the performance of other candidates who were recently tested. And finally, drift is a situation uh, that arises over time uh, where uh, rater standards actually evolve and change um, where the interpretation of raters against the standards evolve over time. Um, and that's something that we want to endeavor to prevent. Now, rater tendencies in 2015. Here's a few things to consider as you rate. Are you as a rater rating within the guidelines and scoring definitions, which we'll go over when we look at the rubric here momentarily? And do candidate errors readily and truly represent a shift in meaning of a response? Now, keeping that in mind, we're going to go ahead and review the scoring rubric. Um, the rubric has not changed. It has been the same since the launch of the test back in early 2012. Um, hard to believe. I think this is, what, the 10th or 11th uh, testing window for this particular exam. Um, so keeping in mind, let's go through the various domains and performance level descriptors for each of the score points associated with the domains. First domain we see here is register. Register is a variety of language used for a particular purpose or in a particular social setting. For example, prescribed grammar, formal or informal tone, forms of address, technical terminology, and colloquial language. A score point of zero in the register, mode, the register domain means that changes in register would render the meaning inaccurate. 
score point of 1 in the register domain means that changes in register can shift the meaning of the message. Score point of 2 means the changes in register do not affect meaning. And a score point of 3 means that register is maintained throughout. Our second domain is lexical content. Lexical content in this definition refers to units of information. These can be individual words or groups of words or phrases that communicate a single concept. Uh, errors in this domain can include omissions, additions, uh, or an accurate translation of a unit of information. In lexical content, score point of zero means that errors render the meaning inaccurate. Score point of one means that errors in lexical content can shift the meaning of the message. Score point of two means that errors in lexical content do not affect meaning. And score point of three means that lexical content is maintained. Our third domain is grammar. Again, in this context, grammar includes the set of rules that govern how sentences or phrases or words are put together in a given language. Examples of errors in grammar can include verb tense, uh, the number or gender, or word order or syntax. In grammar, score point of zero means that errors render the meaning inaccurate. Score point of one means that grammatical errors can shift the meaning of the message. Score point of two means that grammatical errors do not affect meaning. And a score point of three means that grammar is maintained. Finally, our fourth and final uh, domain is quality of speech. In this case, quality of speech focuses on physical characteristics of the speech produced. This can include false starts, repetitions, poor pronunciation or volume control, pace, and intonation. Score point of zero for quality of speech means changes render the meaning inaccurate. Score point of one means the changes in quality of speech can shift the meaning of the message. Score point of two means the changes in quality of speech do not affect meaning. And finally, the score point of three means the quality of speech is maintained. Now, I'm sure you noticed that there was a lot of common terminology from one item to the next as we went through. So um, keep in mind the following. Each score point has a specific meaning, and all ratings should be done with that meaning in mind. A score of zero always indicates there are changes or errors which render the results inaccurate. Um, score point of one means there are changes or errors that can shift the meaning. Score point of two means there are changes or errors that do not shift the meaning. And a point of three means there are no changes or errors. Always remember, folks, that scoring is not a matter of counting errors, but rather assessing the impact of the errors uh, if they do occur on the meaning. Some additional notes on scoring. If a candidate should self-correct, score the last utterance regardless of whether it is right or wrong. Events of this nature should be considered as a false start when rating for the quality of speech domain. If you find it helpful to do so, uh, we recommend that you score against the lexical content uh, domain first. And uh, along the same lines, please keep in mind that omissions uh, are lexical content errors applied to that domain. Uh, continuing on the topic, if a test taker fails to maintain register of the speaker provider or of the patient, this is an error and it should be scored accordingly. Um, also keep in mind that any regionalism used in the response is accepted as correct if the response is free from meaning and grammar errors. Now there may be situations where data is missing. And raters need to distinguish between the sources of the error, as this can shift the rating task accordingly. If data is missing due to technical reasons, do not penalize the candidate. If the responses for the rest of the item are sufficient, score it. Now, this does not concern key issues related to scales, uh, medical terms, terms of art, or colloquialisms, or things of that nature. Please mark utterances that are absent for technical reasons as inaudible when appropriate. If you cannot score, mark that issue as cannot be rated. 
literally enter cannot be rated in the comment field associated with each one of the vignettes. Now, on the other hand, if data is missing due to candidate reasons, candidates should be penalized. If 50% of a recording or more is missing and the response cannot be rated, check the box, cannot be rated, and provide a comment in the notes. Um, documentation of this is important and must be noted. I know that uh, Natalia and I have been kind of uh, harping is not the right way to put it, but we've, we've tried to emphasize over the last several rating periods uh, the importance of providing comments. Um, if you are a chief, we're going to expect that you provide comments always. Um, but particularly when there are problems and you find that you're unable to score something, those comments can be very important. Now, as mentioned, if any data appears to be missing due to candidate-related reasons that candidates uh, may be penalized, some possible examples of that could be that uh, candidates' pace is too slow, there are too many self-corrections or false starts that can result in the candidate not completing the message and uh, subsequently running out of time. So again, if 50% or more of a response is missing and the response cannot be rated, check that box that says cannot be rated. And again, provide that comment in the notes to specify why. Uh, for example, too many self-corrections, candidate ran out of time. Again, it seems very simple, folks, but it is very, very important. Um, training refresh, a couple of things to keep in mind here. Um, just a reminder that each rater is expected to work individually, no pairing up faults. Um, we've already discussed the importance of the rating system and its understanding and the need for raters to agree. And we wanted to mention, um, in terms of where we see the greatest variability in terms of the rating, um, we need to be very clear, folks, that um, overall, uh, you as raters demonstrate very strong, consistent agreement across all the rating activities. But that being said, if there are one area where there is slightly more variability, it would be in the domain of lexical content. Uh, grammar register and quality of speech uh, are you know, uh, even uh, similarly consistently rated. Now, as we've mentioned earlier, um, McCann and CCHI jointly review rater performance at the end of each testing window. In this process, we consider three specific pieces of information. Uh, how well raters agree with each other or their peers. How often individual raters required a judge or chief compared to the group overall. And how variable were the ratings from a particular rater. We'd like to mention that if you have not heard directly from CCHI concerning the quality of your rating, uh, congratulations. It means that your rating has fallen within the range of acceptable standards, and you are in good shape. And to kind of echo what I said a few moments ago, your comments on candidate responses are very important. We are asking if you assign a score of 0 or a 1 to a response, you must provide a comment in the notes field. And as I also mentioned, chiefs must provide comments for all responses. We ask that you comment if a candidate has poor skills of keeping the meaning and finding equivalent. Um, also comment if a candidate has poor command of grammar. And also comment if a candidate mostly does not maintain register um, replacing colloquial expressions with neutral ones or vice versa. Objectivity of the scoring process. Um, objectivity in the scoring is, is absolutely critical because each of the languages that we certify or that CCHI certifies is spoken in multiple lo uh, locations. Um, and this can often result in many variations in the same language. Keeping that in mind, CCHI has specifically recruited raters from a broad spectrum of countries and regions within countries. The objectivity uh, is also ensured by having multiple raters rate each candidate, as many as 14. Um, as you can see here, 
Uh, you know, most of the tests have seven vignettes. Each is rated by two raters. Um, so potentially you could have one candidate actually rated by 14 separate raters. The use of multiple well-trained raters uh, helps provide insurance that a candidate's rating is free from many of the well-known rater effects that we mentioned earlier in the session. As a final measure, in cases where raters fail to agree, in the application of score for a particular item, the chief is used to determine that final candidate rating. Um, collectively, all of these measures ensure that rating for CHI exams are free from bias and are as representative as possible of the candidate's true level of performance. Now we have a few other practical tips. Um, uh, designed to help maintain the objectivity of the scoring process for each of you. Um, as we mentioned, CCHI really wants each candidate to be rated by as, as wide a range of raters as possible, so please keep the following steps in mind. Try to allocate your time as much as possible um, evenly across the rating window. And we're basically asking here don't log in on the first day of rating and do all of your rating the first day and then never log into the scoring tool again. You know, it's, it's much better to do a couple of vignettes uh, across many days than it is to do many vignettes on one day. Uh, we also ask that you try not to rate more than two to three responses for any particular candidate. Um, if in listening to a response, a candidate seems familiar to you, uh, they very likely are, and in that case, we would ask that you skip and return that item to the pool and move on to the next one. Now, that tip, folks, is going to apply to Spanish and Mandarin raters only. Um, there is a, a slightly smaller pool of Arabic raters, so for Arabic, we probably say, keep in mind, you know, no more than four or five responses per candidate. Uh, but again, for Spanish and Mandarin, we're looking at two or three as a max. And we do ask that you, as closely as possible, follow my instructions regarding the initial rating workload at the beginning of the testing cycle. And I'll detail that in just a moment. So workloads per language. For Spanish, the light is green. As soon as we hang up here tonight, you are uh, given the green light, and you're able to log into the scoring tool and begin rating. I think as of... Uh, the end of business today, we had, I think it's 28 or 29 candidates complete tests. So there's uh, lots of vignettes sitting there waiting to be rated. Um, again, if you're a Spanish rater, you can go up to 150. Then we ask that you stop. And please wait for the, uh, a note from either myself or Natalia uh, that says it's OK to rate more. Uh, you'll almost certainly be allowed to do so. For Arabic and Mandarin raters, you also have the ability to start now. You have a green light. As soon as we're done our session tonight, feel free to log into the scoring tool and begin rating. We do ask that you rate up to 20 and then stop. Uh, again, at that point, please wait for instructions to come from either Natalia or myself uh, saying, you know, as of a certain date, it's okay to go in and do 10 more or 20 more. Now, we made mention a couple of slides ago about doing our very best to maintain objectivity uh, when we're trying to rate. And we wanted to give a mechanical tip that should help you folks with this. Um, I know it's a, a, a tip that we make each time that we do our rater training, but it's definitely important. Um, how to ID a particular candidate. When you are logged into the scoring tool, you will see that there is a column that lists user ID and session ID. This represents the candidate. You will find that numbers in that column, when they all come from the same person, it's the same number. However, the response indicates particular uh, response vignettes from one candidate. And again, we're trying not to rate more than four vignettes that have the same user ID. So again, looking at this example, number 107-1343 is a candidate. We have four different responses for that one candidate. And we definitely don't want to rate any more than that for any one person to maintain that objectivity. I don't think we've had any accommodated candidates for a couple of testing windows, but 
Uh, I would like to hand things over to Natalia for just a moment. She can address the slide for everybody. Thank you, Rich. Yes, and I will be very brief. We don't have any special accommodations for this testing window, but just to remind that if uh, for any reason you hear things like stop, next, which are in English during the recording of a uh, answer that usually indicates that there is a human reader present and this is the instruction by the candidate to that human reader um, and they you know you should not uh, consider this as an addition or any kind of mistake if you hear those kinds of um, instructions uh, and also there is always a chance that the site translation section uh, of the response could be uh, cut off because it is presented in a prepared simultaneous mode so the candidate doesn't have the same amount of time as all the other candidates have uh, for that section. So that's pretty much it. Thank you, Rich. Thank you. Short and sweet. Now moving along. If during your waiting time you have some type of questions, please keep in mind the following. CCHI is ultimately the owner of all policies associated with a CHI test. So anything relating to a test policy should be addressed directly to CCHI, uh, particularly Natalia or Malika, at the contacts that are provided on a later slide. Um, we'll actually show email addresses and correct spelling and name and so forth. McCann is to be contacted only for customer support scoring problems, or questions specific to the scoring process itself. We also will show the contacts from McCann a little bit later in the slide deck as well. Contacts have not changed from the last couple of uh, testing windows and rating windows, uh, so I'm sure you're well familiar with myself and Beth and Natalia and Malika. Um, but in any event, we'll give you all that information again just so you have it readily available. Now, if you have technical issues during the rating process, there are different contacts and different manners of contacts, depending on the time of day. We ask that during normal customer support hours, you email McCann at the address provided on the slide. Measured success at McCannTesting.com. We ask that you singularly email that address, and with that, you do not email the entire group of raters. You'll notice our expanded support hours during the testing window and for the rating thereafter. Um, we run Monday through Thursday, 7.30 to 11 Eastern, and Friday and Saturday, 7.30 to 6. Now, if you have any questions that come up in the off hours, we ask that you email McCann at the addresses provided on the slide. Please uh, contact me first, Rich Overholt, my address listed. Um, you can contact Beth Tobin as well as my backup. And we would ask that all inquiries of that nature, uh, you would copy uh, Natalia and Malika, and their addresses are listed there as well. And we will do our very best to try to get in touch with you, um, you know, even up to, to uh, late hours and weekends and things like that while we're during the testing window and the rating thereafter. Now, just to reiterate, when can raters begin rating? Now, the light is green. As soon as we hang up, feel free to start rating. Um, as with the last, oh, I guess it's probably five testing windows or so, uh, the rating window actually runs parallel to the testing, so certainly feel free. The testing window itself is going to run through Wednesday, February 11th. Um, the rating is going to start now and run until the 23rd of February, so you've got lots of time to finish your rating. And we'll give Chiefs five more days thereafter uh, to go ahead and wrap up by the last day of February, which if everything goes according to schedule, will give us the ability to release scores to candidates sometime in the first week of March. So this brings us to the end of the road in terms of uh, our prepared presentation. At this point, we will open up the floor to any questions that anybody has. Um, and certainly encourage uh, uh, anything that is a, a question or a concern or that you'd like to address to myself or Natalia.
Natalia, I think we're getting good. Hello? Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is Abdullah. Um, I just have one question. Um, sure. uh, regarding the website, is there any way that we have a tab that uh, that that gives us an idea on how many uh, vignettes that we are rating? For example, like an account, a tab that we can click on it, and it gives us an idea about what did we do uh, for the session, for the rating session. If I am not mistaken, when you're logged into the scoring tool, it does show the number of vignettes that you've rated, but I believe it's cumulative. In other words, I don't think right. uh, the, the, the count does not reset. Now, I, I have to say, Abdul, that's actually kind of an interesting idea, um, and I certainly don't want to go rocking the boat right this moment, but that's something that I will address with Natalia. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I want to look and see if there is a way that we could either provide new login accounts or something each quarter so that we could reset those numbers. I, I actually think that's a very good idea. Um, we would just need to talk through the mechanics of the best way to do it. Um, but I think there's value to that. So um, yes, sir. Can, can I say we'll, we'll talk about it internally and uh, do our best to come up with some means to accommodate it, uh, hopefully? Sure, absolutely. Thank you very much. Yeah, great idea, though. Absolutely useful. Yes, and that's, uh, you know, uh, one of the things that we, when we do the annual evaluation, which is right now uh, our psychometricians are evaluating your performance in 2014, so it's actually maybe good to reset it for either each testing window for a year, and that's something we will uh, double check. Um, I have just a couple of comments for the um, on this refresher uh, training, one is about your comments. I know we keep asking it, and yet uh, I don't see um, too many comments, even when the uh, score is one. Uh, I want you to also to keep in mind that uh, your comments are most valuable when they are very specific. Just writing something like the grammar is poor. It's not really helpful because I cannot. We cannot provide such kind of feedback to the uh, candidate. However, if you would give a very specific example, like instead of word miscarriage, they mistranslated the word miscarriage, or they could not uh, keep the tenses correct correctly, or something, the conjugation verb conjugation was wrong. So that provides a very specific thing. So again, we're not looking for dissertations in those notes. Just one or two specific words, and that will be more than enough because candidates, you know, the more we people we test, the more they are actually um, savvy about asking for feedback if they fail. And that's when we go back and look at your um, comments uh, during the scoring. Also, I know a couple of you are volunteering uh, to uh, help us with the online rate module creation. And um, part of that uh, module will have exercises helping, uh, you know, potential uh, raters to understand our scoring rubric. So today when you heard this differences in shift meaning uh, no shift in meaning when you assign 0, 1, 3, 4, or uh, 2 or 3 uh, of this course. That's something that we will try to create in the exercises. And a couple of you already got this request to provide uh, an example of a response to of translation of a certain sentence, which would be score 0, score 1, score 3. Uh, that's what we're talking about, the same scoring tool that you're using, because when we're create that online training, it'll be using the same scoring. And we hope that your collective wisdom and experience will help us build a very good uh, online training program for future raiders. And believe me, you guys will be the first one to take it uh, as soon as it's done. That will be one of the uh, pilots of that training module. So 
if you know who you are, if you're working with us, uh, please, uh, we're very uh, grateful that you're doing it. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. Uh, and I or Karen will be more than uh, happy to clarify exactly the tasks associated with that uh, preparation. With that, that's it on my end. So uh, I wish everyone a good uh, rating period. Please uh, be uh, mindful of the time and the deadlines. We do want to finish on time. Um, put yourself into candidate's shoes. Somebody took the exam on the 21st. Believe me, they're dying to know the results by the 28th of February. So thank you very much. And Rich, thank you very much as always for uh, doing this training for us. It's my pleasure and uh, I will talk with you again at 9 o'clock. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Yep. And just the last a minute, I'm sorry, I forgot to do that. A roll call. So let me name those who I see. And if I don't see you, say your name. So Abdullah, uh, Chiwe, Jason, uh, Yami, Ray, Simon. Yes. Is that all? Is that yep. everyone? Yes. Oh, OK, yes. good. Thank you. All right. Good night, Thank you, guys. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.